Sorry, verse 30 of chapter 10 of the gospel according to St. Luke. In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho where he fell into the hands of robbers. Mm -hmm. And those of you who had the benefit of being in my class, I talked about this down at the conference just a little bit, but there's something that God won't let me go with this. He says, they stripped him of his clothes, they beat him, and he went away, mm -hmm. and went away, uh, leaving him, what? Half dead. Okay, half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed on by the other side. Uh -huh. So too did a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him pass by on the other side, but a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and banged, bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine on him. Then he put the man on his what? His oh, own no. donkey, took him to an inn and took what? Care of him. Uh -huh. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have incurred. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. While which of these uh, do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? Yes. And obviously, the the, the the moral of the story is that the Samaritan was. Yes. Uh -huh. All right. So let's look at this. He says that a priest happened to be going down the same road as where this man came down from Jerusalem to Jericho. So here you see a man who's leaving Jericho. He comes down to from Jerusalem to Jericho. Jerusalem is a place of worship. He leaves the place of worship and comes down to Jericho. While he's on his way down, he gets into Jericho. Scripture says that he fell amongst thieves, which means he was attacked. Yeah. Okay, He's attacked, he's fallen amongst thieves, and they rob him. Yeah. They beat him. Okay, They rob him and they beat him, and they leave him half yeah. dead. Mm -hmm. he's, he's half dead, and he's also half alive. Come on. Mm -hmm. Bless the Lord. That there is no benefit in being half of anything. That's right. Amen. Because you're too much dead to be alive, too much alive to be dead. Okay? Um, I, I'm not going to go the traditional <coughs> approach in this text of, of talking about uh, being half dead and all that kind of stuff. I've talked out of this text before. But I, I want to talk to you about one of the main areas in our life that we don't like to talk about. Okay? And I'm going to show you some principles in it, and then I'm out. All right? <laughs> half dead, half alive, half empty, half full. Amen. So he falls amongst thieves, right? Yes. And he goes amongst thieves, he gets beat, half dead. And then the Levite walks by, he's the one that carries the word of God. Levites, right? They carry the word of God, all this word, but couldn't do nothing, would not do anything. Uh -huh. As Levitical people who are stuck on word. They got a whole lot of word, a whole lot of scripture, but they don't do Jack Dilly squat. All right, all right, come on. They know how to quote scripture all day long, but when it comes time for action, they don't do anything. That's right. I want you to see the man in the text in Luke's gospel, according to chapter 10. I want you to see this 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 man that's that's half dead. I want you to see him as the world. All right. Okay? That's coming to church. Who left Jerusalem, right? And he, and he comes down to Jerusalem. He leaves Jerusalem. He's coming down to Jericho. It's, it's, it's interesting that it's called Jericho, right? He, he leaves Jerusalem, the place of worship, and ends up at Jericho. When he ends up at Jericho, he's left half dead. The, the Levite walks by him. Whole lot of word, but doesn't help that's him. Right. That's right. All right? The priest walks by, right? Who else was it? The priest walks by, and, and, and he doesn't help. He walks on the other side. Mm -hmm. So here you see a, a, an example of people who come to the house of God, mm -hmm. and you have priests, because we are priests, we are priests, right? Levites, mm -hmm. who see situations and needs, but we take it, and the scripture says, he went to the other side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Other the other side, which means I see you, but I don't have time for you. I can't do nothing for you. I'm too busy with my word. Yeah. Yeah. I'm too busy with my prayer life. Yeah. I'm too busy in my prophecy that I can't help you. Yeah. The moment the church gets too busy to help folk, we should be in, in, in church. All right. The purpose of a church is not so you can just get more word. It's to take the word that you get so you can help other people. That's how you got here. That's how I got here. Falls amongst thieves. Both of these guys walk by, but here comes a Samaritan. No name person. 
Not a lot of word. Mm -hmm. Not a prophecy. That's right. Not no Levitical structure. Yes. Sees this person in trouble. Bandages up his wounds. Pours oil and wine on him. That was a mixture they used for healing. Mm -hmm. Takes him and puts him on his own donkey. That's right. Now the man who came down to Jerusalem didn't have a donkey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How could the Samaritan bring this man to any place else for help if he didn't have a donkey? All right. Mm -hmm. Scripture said he had what? His oh. own. Mm -hmm. Come on, mm -hmm. All right. That's right. But if he was late on the payment, that's right. right. Come on now. Let's let me bring it up to the daytime. Uh -huh. If he had a car and he was bringing this person uh -huh. Uh -huh. to try to help them, but his car was repoed. How could he help the man? Amen. Regardless of how much work, I got a whole lot of work, but you can't help me. Because uh -huh. the work is not what I need. Yes. That's right. That's right. Now I know we talked for years, we said yeah. you put a word on. You gotta put a word on it, but faith without works is dead yeah. being alone. Right. Your words have to have action. That's right. Yes, they do. Jesus said it like this. He said, if a man is hungry, you don't preach to the man, you feed him. The feeding is the preaching. Uh -huh. So many times we want to quote scripture at folk and tell them pray on it, believe God for it, but that doesn't help them. A man that is naked doesn't need a prophecy that one day God's gonna bless you. I'm old now. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So he puts him on his own donkey, which means what? That he had ownership of his own way of transportation. Amen. Now I'm not telling you that you can't get a car that's financed. I'm not telling you that you shouldn't do that kind of stuff. What I am saying is that you should get to a place where you start doing better business so you can own your stuff. That's right. Amen. Right. Amen. I've had both. I've had cars that I had to make payments on, and that's fine. As long as you got the money, I told you claim the payments. Uh -huh. That's right. That's right. I've had cars that I own. The car that I have outside right now is paid for. I don't ever have to worry about anybody coming to me and getting my car now. Amen. Amen. Come on, Amen. somebody. Amen. Ain't nobody gonna walk up and say you made on nothing. Yes, right. Hallelujah. You know why? Because it's paid for. Amen. So I don't have to stress about a payment. That's yes. right. Yes. Amen. Yes. Because I own it. Which means I can do whatever I want to do with it. Amen. Put anybody in it I want. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. If I want to take the day and give the keys to somebody and say, take it, God told me to do it, then I can do it. I can release it. You know why? Because I own it. Amen. Yes. Come on, somebody. Right. If you're still paying for a fur coat, you can't release that fur coat to somebody. Amen. Amen. Come on, How the man. enemy gets to us and gets us to tie our hands is to get us tied up in debt. Yes. Yes. To That's where right. we're making yes. payments on a lot of yes. stuff. And then yes. you can't release anything. Right. Because you don't have nothing to release. Because if somebody else owns what you get, what you have. Amen. That's right. That's right. The only thing you can release is a word. That's right. And I'm not I'm not be, belittling a word of God, but when people are hurting, they don't need a word. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, so he, he binds up his wounds, he takes them, and he says the next day he took out, I'm um, sorry, then he put out the man on his own what? Donkey, took him to what? An inn, that's a hotel, right? Yes. So that means he had enough money, he had his own donkey, yes. then he put him on a donkey, first of all, he had oil and wine, so if you had some oil and wine, okay, for this purpose, that means you had some money, because yes. you could do that. Yes. Then, which tells me also, he had knowledge, uh -huh. wisdom, on what to do with the oil and the wine. He wasn't sipping on it. That's right. <laughs> He wasn't making vinaigrette salad dressing with oil and wine. That was for medicinal purpose that he used to help. Right? So he was helping the man, so he had his oil and wine. He had knowledge, wisdom, which means that he obviously spent some time studying so he would be prepared for when a crisis came. Amen. Right? He then took the man, bound up his wounds, put him on his own donkey, he took the donkey in him, took him to an inn, a hotel. And he paid for the man's residency at the hotel, which means he had money. And then he makes a powerful statement. Look what he says. He says, um, the next day he put him on two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said. And when I return, I will what? Reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. So he put him on there with an open tag. Mm. Whatever he eats, whatever he drinks, if there's any expense from what I've already paid extra, see me when I get back. The only way he could have that kind of respect with the innkeeper was he had to have credit. 
Go ahead. Yes. Yes. Because you can't walk with somebody and say, put it on my tab, right. if you ain't got nothing. That's right. Amen. Right. Even if your numbers are bad, you should have such an influence and respect that they know you good for what you say. That's right. Yes. Amen. And he left them there on his word, knowing that when he comes back, whatever the cost is, I got it. Yeah. I'm going to show you how the enemy comes in and he comes to rob. What? Steal, kill, and destroy. Sound like the man that went down to Jericho. That's what happened to him. He got robbed. They tried to kill him. And they stole everything from him. What causes fights and quarrels among you? This is James talking to the church. Don't they come from your what? Desires that battle within you. The reason why people are struggling financially, you know why? Is because we, we have wrong desires. Right. Yes. You're trying to satisfy yes. something yeah. that needs to be satisfied by God. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. So you depress, so you shop. That's All right, right now. Talk about it. Spend money that you don't have to impress people that you don't like. Right. Amen. 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 I said a lot. Give it right. That's right. I'm going to go buy something to make me feel good. I'm not saying that you shouldn't reward yourself. I'm not saying that you should do nice things for yourself. You're sad, so you want to go out and you're going to just buy, you know, $300 worth of clothes. Because you're sad. <clears throat> but you're going to be distraught when the bill comes in. Got that right. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. That's right. That's right. I know. Yes. Taking a trip you can't pay for. So you take a trip you can't pay for, and then while you're sitting on the beach, you're not even relaxing because you're sitting on the beach worried about when you get back home. That's right. <clears throat> Come on, somebody. Amen. Because of your desires. Mm -hmm. Trying to keep up with the Jones, the Browns, the Blues, the Reds, the Grays, trying to keep up with other people. Other people in your family, your brother or your sister's wife, they got something. So they got a new uh, uh, a zero refrigerator. All right, sub zero. Yes, sub zero won't even fit in your kitchen. Yes, right. So you're going to sit in the hallway and have it delivered just to say you got a sub zero. Yes, Y'all ain't going to say no more. Can't even get to the bathroom, sub zero. We got a sub zero too. But you're trying to keep up with them. But you can take the, the, the time to realize that they have certain finances or abilities that you don't have. Amen. And you don't even know how other people got what they got. Maybe somebody gifted it to them. Right, right, right. Amen. Amen. Somebody came to my house yesterday and said, hey, man, I can't believe you just blessed. Every time I look, look at you, you just blessed all. Oh, how is it that you just keep coming up blessed? Amen. I said, because I'm blessed. <laughs> they looked around and said, man, it's a man. I mean, did you think, oh, how did you? I said, because God blessed me. Amen. Amen. But if you would walk in there and think, you think that I did all this, it wasn't me. It was God that blessed me. That's right. Amen. But if you try to keep up with what I have and look at it as if green bought it, all right now, you died going broke. That's right. Because it wasn't me. There were people who sold it to me. There were opportunities that God gave me. Amen. I took him down memory in the lane and started showing him things and telling the stories of how I acquired this and how I got certain things, how, how I got this. And they were just fascinated because of the fact that they saw that God had really just favored me. Yes. Amen. Thank What's you. Don't they come from your, your desires that battle within you? So a lot of times we struggle within ourselves. Yes. We war. Mm -hmm. And you hear the war. You hear gunshots going off. Yes. Cannons going off in your head. <laughs> should I, boom, should I get it? <laughs> Why not? Boom! That's right. Come These on. are things that are going on in you. Right. Come on, somebody. I mean, you be honest, you hear right. Put the dress back. Crack. Right. You don't need another DVD player. Right. Right. But you need another ring for boom. Right. Just walk. Right. Boom. That's good. That's, very That's good. good. You have these desires and you battle within you. You want something, but you don't get it. Right? You you kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You kill. Some people do it naturally, but outside of natural, you kill, you murder with your lips. That's right. You murder with your emotions, your motives, your desires. You kill, right? And and and, and you covet. Is that what, what, what the scripture talks about in the commandments? Do not covet thy neighbor's ox or his ass or his sheep or his goat. Mm -hmm. 
That means you want something that belongs to somebody else. Their man, their woman, That's right. their house, their car, their lifestyle. I don't ever hear any people, I've never, never heard anybody covet um, um, uh, somebody else's honesty. Yes. Mm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Come on. Somebody, somebody else's honesty. So, some, somebody else's proud. I, I, I covet their de determination. <laughs> Their prayer life. I, 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 I covet their sack. I covet their fasting. Right? That's good. You quarrel and you fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. Amen. And the reason why you don't ask, you got all these wars going on, but you don't come to God with that. Because you know He can see through all of it. You come to everybody else with it, but you don't come to God. We don't go to God with it. You know why? Because we know that God already knows. What you up to? Just like you can look at your kids with that, you see them walking, the way they lean, yep. you know they they up to no good when they come to ask you. Uh -huh. that's right. that's right. The way their head is tilted to the side, you can tell. Now look, I know you get ready to go with this, but you ain't getting it. That's right. God sees us coming. He said, "You do not have because you do not ask God. You do not ask God. You ask people, that's right. but you don't ask God. God uses people. Stop asking people. Ask God. God will speak to people." When you ask, you do not what? Receive. Receive because you ask with wrong motives. Mm -hmm. The wrong mojo. Yeah. You ask with wrong motives because your motives are not pure. Mm -hmm. Why do you need another car? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Nothing wrong with having anything, but why do you want it? Mm -hmm. What's behind it? Mm -hmm. Why do you need a, another condo? Why do you need a bigger townhouse? Come on. Come on, somebody. Uh -huh. Why do you need another watch? Uh -huh. yeah. Nothing wrong with having anything, but why do you want it? Uh -huh. Do you want it to profile? Yes. Do you want it to cast the image or a shadow that you are somebody and somebody is not? Uh -huh. yes. okay. Why do you want a man? Uh -huh. Come on, right right now. Now. Why do you want a wife or a woman? Uh -huh. Why do you want kids? Why do you want a title or position? That's right. Why do you come to church? Why do you want to be on an auxiliary? Or ministry? Thank you. He said, because you have wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your own pleasures. Mm -hmm. Which tells me, God doesn't mind us having things, he minds things having us, but he said, the reason why people are not getting what they're asking for, because God sees our motives, and he says, because you all you want to do is pleasure yourself. Mm 